Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Johanna, I am obsessed with ancient history and I'll make videos on it. So if you're new here, please subscribe, hang about, um, or not, up to you. Today I wanted to talk about something that I'd never ever heard of before and I was kind of scratching my head about it because my background, I come from a Christian upbringing and um, I thought that I got my head around sort of biblical history very well. Um, turns out, no. Um, I'd never heard of the idea that God supposedly used to have a wife and she was called Asherah and she was kind of redacted and erased from the modern Bible. Um, what? I hear you say? Stick around and um, I'm gonna let you know what I found out because damn. So Asherah, in the first place that we see her in history, she appears in ancient texts and she's the consort or the, the co-partner, she's the queen uh, alongside El, the god El, who was the Canaanite chief god. He was like the top god of all of their gods. And um, he became, he kind of got merged into the Israelite Yahweh. Even in the Bible, I found a verse where Moses, I believe, God speaking to Moses and saying, um, I showed myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the god El, but now you know me by my new name, which is Jehovah or Yahweh. I was like, damn, I did not know that. I did not know that God told Moses that he used to be known by another name. Interesting. Anyway, that's just where um, Asherah first pops up. She is known uh, as this Canaanite god. There is loads of evidence being found in modern archeology span that is, showing that Asherah was not just a Canaanite goddess, she was also an Israelite. She was seen as a co-partner in tandem with Yahweh, the main god of, of the Israelites. She, she was up there, she was worshipped. She was worshipped by King Solomon. She was worshipped by King David, who was supposedly like the king of Israel. She was pretty important. So I'm just gonna run you through who she is and what she did. Asherah, also known as Asherah. I say Asherah because my brother is called Asher, so I just read it like that. So we're gonna go with Asherah. Sorry if that offends you. She was a, she was the main goddess. She was the mother goddess. She was seen as the queen of heaven is one of her titles. She was the, at the side, co-partners with Yahweh, the main god. She was, if he was the king, she was the queen. Um, she was, yeah, the mother goddess. She was, uh, like for supposedly a fertility god. When you see little, there was images of her, they found little figurines of her literally all over. Oh, hit myself in the face with my necklace. I'm that excited. They found little um, figurines of her. Her image is everywhere, found not just in places of worship, but she's found in private homes. So people were worshiping her just, you know, at home on the day to day. And she's always depicted holding up her boobies. Um, she's the goddess of fertility, so she's got boobies. Boobies are for um, the babies, primarily. Um, sometimes she's seen holding what they think is a piece of cake. There's a Bible verse saying, people who make cake for the queen of heaven. It was the, the thing that you did at the time as an offering to the god, you would bake her a cake, which one, amazing. I, if I was a goddess, I would definitely ask people to bake me cake. Chocolate, thank you. But two, I can see why they did that, because if you are the goddess of fertility, you know, the whole bun in the oven, baking a baby, um, I feel like a womb is like the place where you grow things, you're gonna bake a cake. It, it makes sense. And I think that it's less messy and far yummier than like slaughtering a lamb. You know what I mean? Hmm. So not only do we find these, um, discoveries of these figurines of her sort of in and out of the house and just everywhere. They also find her, and this is where it gets really interesting, they find altars to her, standing stones in Israelite temples, which is incredible. So there is a temple that was found, let me just refer to my notes. Um, where was the temple found? Where was the temple found? I wish I wrote my notes in a more precise way. Tel Dan, was it in Tel Dan? We're gonna go with that, maybe I'm wrong. I'm gonna clarify that and I'm gonna put it uh, in the video. They found a ancient temple around 8th century, 9th century BCE, and it had the three, the three part formation of a temple, which is the outside, the inside, and the Holy of Holies. And inside the Holy of Holies, you have a stone, which kind of represents the God that you go to the Holy of Holies to 
converse with. Interestingly, there wasn't one stone. There were two. A big one and a slightly smaller one. There was Yahweh and Asherah. So it shows that at the time, they regarded, even though the books now say that they only thought there was one God, or wanted to believe there was one God, at the time, in practice, they were worshipping too. I mean, that's just mind-blowing. If you think about, look, just think about this for a second, logistically. If, in human history, those people hadn't come in and redacted the idea that you were worshipping both a divine feminine and a divine masculine, that there was two sides to the God, there was like a partnership there, there was an equality that was respected. If they hadn't changed that and removed the feminine aspects of, of God, and they just kept the masculine side of the God, I mean, the impact of that would just be huge. I was just sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God. Like the last thousand, few thousand years of civilization, all of the culture and the rules have kind of stemmed from the person that decided to, or the people that decided to take her away from the history. Blows my mind, incredible. As a woman, this idea gets me quite passionate because how different things would have been. And if it doesn't make you emotional or angry, or if you don't connect with that, imagine it had been the other way around. Imagine they decided to redact the sacred masculine and how different the world would be from that. It would, yeah. Where were we? All oh, right, Evid archeological evidence, uh, more evidence for Asherah. So, okay, so not only have we got the temples which have the standing stones of um, Yahweh and Asherah, in the Temple of Solomon, there was an altar place for Asherah as well. Um, there are references in the Bible of people ba baking, baking bread, like I mentioned before, breaking bread for Yashur, Asherah. <laughs> Yasherah, that would have been, Yahweh and Asherah would have been, that would have been their celebrity couple name, Yashura. There is a reference in the Bible about women in the temple um, weaving fabric as an offering to Yashura. Ah, they found an eighth century burial to uh, a prince called Yuri, Yuri Yahu. Just go for it, go for it with confidence with names. And the inscription on the burial says, blessed be Yuri Yahu by Yahweh and his Ashura, for from his enemies, he has been saved. <laughs> I mean, that, that, okay, cool. And this mention has been found not just once, but in multiple places. Um, in archeology span in 1975, uh, it's a site they found pottery jars. And again, the inscription said, Yahweh and his Asherah. In Deuteronomy, in the Bible. And now this is where I kind of had a moment of like, oh damn, oh damn, like the redaction is real. So in the original Hebrew translation of Deuteronomy 33, two to three. Actually, let me get this up and read this properly so that I'm not just saying it out of my brain. The original, the oldest biblical text, it said, Yahweh came from Sinai and shone forth from his own seer. I don't know what that is. He showed himself from Mount Paran and yea, he came among the myriads of Kudsu, which is like holy ones. And at his right hand, his own Asherah. Indeed, he loves the clans and all of his holy ones on his left. That is not the translation that you will find in any English Bible. I went through all the translations of, of the Bible on the, the line, all the English ones, and they have redacted and his Asherah, at, at his right hand, at his Asherah. So they say that just Yahweh came down from Sinai. They took her out. They erased her. They deleted her. It's kind of mad. I'm mad at that. So not only have we got physical evidence in the temples that she had a standing stone and she was being worshipped, uh, we've got reference to it, little references that are, are kept in the Bible. There are 40 references in total in the original translation of the Bible to Asherah. I found that the number 40, 40 times was an interesting one. I don't know if it has any meaning. However, the number 40 in the Bible is significant, like the 40 days and nights, or they were for 40 years wandering around the desert. Um, 40 means qualification, the number 40. And I don't know if if, if someone, I don't know, does the, the fact that she appears 40 times, that like she's qualified as a god? I don't, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Her story got squished, and not only was she like physically redacted, she got turned into a pole. How do I say this? Asherah was the name of the goddess, 
but it was also what they referred to as um, like a wooden pole or a staff or um, they used to chop down a tree, like chop off the tree's arms and then they used to carve the tree into like a kind of statue of Asherah and it would be like a symbol of her um, out and about or next to the temple or in the altar. So it was like a dual word. It was both the pole that can represent her and her. I mean, I wish that they could, they could have just thought of another name, but anyway. Um, so the church and the early leaders decided to, whenever she's mentioned, they go, they try and say, oh, we're talking about, they were talking about the pole. We were talking about the stick that God was holding, um, not Asherah, the goddess. Um, they try and like separate the two. And I think that's very cheeky because clearly when you look at the archeological evidence, she was a goddess that was worshiped in the holy of holies and she was worshipped in the home like she was just there and she's rubbed out uh, i don't think she was just a pole bear with me i'm blind i'm back uh she was also the imagery of um asherah she she's just she's just in so many places and you can see her creeping into other places as well um she was adopted by the egyptians um they have images of asherah and she's depicted a lot of the time standing on lions or next to lions and holding snakes in her hand which i find really interesting for a number of reasons here's for why she's known as the goddess of lions the lioness she's known as the goddess of snakes just by some complete weird coincidence i'm a leo so I'm a lion and I was born the year of the snake. So I, weirdly, my zodiac aligns with both of those goddess elements. I mean, <laughs> does that mean I'm a goddess? So she's often depicted uh, holding these snakes and on top of a lion or being surrounded by lions. And then the idea of Asherah being a pole or like the wooden pole of Asherah or a tree, because again, tree of life, fertility, mother goddess, the giver of life, the tree of life. You can see how they're all like the symbology is aligning. And then if you, so if you've got a tree or a wooden pole with snakes or holding snakes, you can see how that very easily becomes, even today, the most modern symbol of like medicine is the, that thing. I put the pole with the snakes on it um, in my notes, but it actually has a name. We'll, we'll get the name. But interesting, yeah, if she's like the mother healer, the comforter, pole with snakes. She's not a pole, she's a woman. She had 400 prophets to her name, which was, which was like amazing. So you've got the god Baal, um, who in the, the theology and the, when the mythology was her son. So she, she was the queen, um, to Yahweh the king, the Yahweh the king, and she had 70 children um, who, 70 gods, because back in the day, it wasn't unusual for gods to have family trees because you were allowed to have more than one god and it would make sense that gods had partners and children and so on and so forth. Um, that all got erased when it became just a one god ideology. But she had children and she was the mother of Baal, who was a pretty big god in like, the history of gods. And Baal had 450 prophets and uh, Asherah had 400. Like she was up there, you know, with the men, with the prophets. I mean, that was a big deal. So anyone telling you that Asherah like wasn't a big deal and was just like a little, little, no, she was, she was a big deal historically. And I find it mental 2000 years, 3000 years later, she's not known. Also found it interesting that back in the day, there were priestesses working in the temples and at the altars, um, priestesses were doing a lot of the work. It was only a relatively new idea that only men could be in like higher powers of religion and like leaders of religion. Um, like that's literally quite a new thing. If you look back in history, women were in there and doing it too. And what I find like ridiculous is that the word priestess has been mistranslated a lot into temple prostitutes. They literally called them temple prostitutes. That's the translation that we get um, in the modern day. But if you look back, it was more priestess um, because there were temple prostitutes. Prostitute. There were temple prostitutes. That was a thing, um, but they were male and female. They both they both sides were doing it. They would actually have sexual rituals that they would perform. I mean, I don't even know what they were, but it wasn't like an only female thing. It was it was a holy thing and it was males and females have been referenced doing that, but yet the word priestess has been 
mistranslated many times into female prostitute. So this week I had a Zoom call with History with Kaylee. Um, she is another amazing YouTuber. Check out her channel, I'll link her below. She does um, some phenomenal range of videos all about ancient history. And we just got chatting about um, ancient um, historical folklore, religion, um, and then the idea of the goddess and the matriarchy did come up in our conversation. So I'm gonna put in some of our, you can get a sneak peek, uh, just sort of tap into our Zoom call if you want and have a little listen, because this was the conversation that sparked my research on ancient feminine goddesses and why they, why didn't they make it down the line like some of the other gods did. That conversation was the reason why I started researching, so have a little listen. This is connected slightly off track, but I saw a, there is a brain specialist who is on, um, he's on like Instagram and TikTok and he um, analyzes um, brains and brain damage and, and personality traits. And he like explains everything about the brain that we know thus far. And he was saying yeah. the difference between the male and the female brain and the kind of strengths and differences between them. And he, and he said that the female brain is wired in such a way that it is exceptionally good at all the leadership skills, the problem solving and mm -hmm. um, the um, delegating. And it, he said that brain wise, if you were going to pick somebody to be a leader or be a boss, um, the female brain is actually wired better to, to delegate and lead. And the male brain is actually better to take that and execute it. Um, but we, yeah. over time, reverse that so that majority of leaders are men but actually the female brain is very well adapted to do it and I, yeah. was, I was like wow that's like coming from the one of the leading brain scientists just really super interesting and then when you look back in history I was amazed at the when we went to Dendera and there was the temple of Hathor apparently that's how it's not Hathor it's Hathor, Hathor. um Hat heart, yeah, and she yes. um that th to, to find out that the ancient <clears throat> um Egyptian and the pre-Egyptian it was a matriarchal society and it was the women that like held the keys yeah. to the powerhouse. And yeah. that explains, I think I've mentioned this before, but it just blew my mind that because you know the, the Egyptian dynasties were so into bread and they were yeah. all in bread. Yeah. And this is why, because to stay attached to the family and to be attached to the power, you had to be associated with the female yeah. of the family. So they had to keep marrying yeah, I made a whole video their about sisters. This. Yeah. And I was like, Ugh, that's why. Because otherwise it's like, Ugh, why? I thought it was just to like keep the blood pure. No, it's to keep attached to the females because yeah. the the houses of um of the Egyptian households, it was under, it was her house. And it was, was like, like from... um. Isis and Osiris it goes all the way back to their story because mm -hmm. she brought him back to life and then he became the king of the underworld because yeah. well you know he died and then came back but she was the one that gave him back his life so she was the most important god and, the, and that's yeah the, the in the temples there especially in Dendera and all over Egypt the 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 god the big goddess that's it's a goddess that is uh shown in the sky and and Most. she's the one that gives birth to everything and and the fact that there's a massive argument that the sphinx was originally a female um, embodied form and yeah um i was it blew my mind that we have and it wasn't only until it was only the later like pharaoh later on in the dynasties that they switched it and there was the greeks and everything the romans that that took the power away from the women i was like yeah what makes so much sense it makes so got, much sense. I but like, if you want to know for sure that like your bloodline is pure and you're like of royal descent, it would only be known for sure if it was through the female. Mm. Because, hey, like the female pushed the baby out. Like there's no question about it. <laughs> With the men, you don't know if it's his or another one's, you know, seed. Oh, yeah, yeah, With yeah. the woman, it's like, of course, like she gave birth. It's her baby. It's definitely her baby. Yeah, there's no there's no contest about whether or not you're the mother exactly. you are. Exactly. Um, yeah, and it's interesting how that, yeah, but maybe that, I, I think that theme in a lot of ancient, uh, folklore and things about this like the wise woman the mother of even the oldest um Sophia 
yeah. Sophia, like the oldest god, like the goddess of the universe being, being you know, God as a woman. It's weird that we think of, yeah, we're, we've been kind of indoctrinated to think of God as a man. Gaia, the goddess of the earth, the mother of the earth. Mother nature. Mother earth, mother nature. Like it says it in itself. Like if you go back far enough, gods weren't necessarily male. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I called my oldest cat Gaia because like she was going to be the mom of the pack. Like, of course, no question about it. She was Gaia. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, of course, the females we held... Well, at least in, in like the stone age and things like that women were really important and they were hunters they weren't just gatherers like that's bullshit it's, mm. it's just dumb to think that the women rather no if a woman was good with like a bow or like with a spear she would for sure hunt and there there were males that would just gather because they couldn't throw a fucking spear it's simple as that like everyone has qualities like it doesn't have to do anything with your gender they found like viking women with like complete warrior attire and stuff like that like yes women were warriors we were yeah. hunters we did the same things as men we weren't less that only became a thing in like what the, the past thousand years two thousand yeah, it's years really maybe? modern it's a really modern mindset and when you like yeah. unlearn that and I came to the I came to this like late in the day and was like, oh man! Like I remember as a kid learning about um, the uh, Boudicca mm -hmm. and the uh, and she fighting the Romans and I was like, wait, she was the leader of the army. Mm -hmm. That's mad. Um, yeah, oh, that's cool. And and be, yeah, so I was like, so and then I, I knew about the Viking. Yes, yeah, Viking women had um, major powers. I mean, they yeah. were probably one of the last women to hold powers in like recent history, but they had um, they were, had certain rules, like you were allowed to hit your husband. You were allowed to beat your husband with a ladle. If yeah, like, and they were allowed to like wrong. divorce their husbands yeah. if their husbands weren't nice to them, if their husbands weren't around them enough, if their husbands cheated on them. Like yeah. there wasn't even a question. They would just, okay, bye. I'm not yeah. with you anymore. Not with like, you anymore. You don't treat me good. Yeah. And they had yeah. keys to the house. They held the keys to the house. The women would hold the key and have them like on their person. Yeah. Um, and they would hold the money and they would have all these powers and stuff. And then really quickly, when Christianity kind of took over from and the Saxons came in, um, hmm, it yep. all changed. And suddenly you, you weren't even allowed to show your hair. Like, yeah. And it, would, it, it all became, went to the shits. It all went down the toilet. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Had you heard of Asherah? Had you heard of um, the idea that God originally had a wife and that he's been erased and kind of nearly, very nearly scrubbed off from history? One thing I think that the biblical scholars didn't realize was that in the future, we were gonna have archeologists and scientists that were gonna be able to like date and cross-reference almost everything. And I don't think they, well, I don't think they foresaw that. Um, so they tried, but they failed to remove her entirely from the history books. However, I feel like she's still not in a, in the conscience of people when you think about the history of gods. Um, she was news to me. So let me know what you think. Um, if you have any information on it, I would be super interested to know. Um, thank you so much. If you've made it to the end, you're great. <laughs> I would super appreciate it if you would like or share the video. That's just one free way that you can just help me um, keep the channel running and maybe expose me to other people who would really want to see this. Yay algorithm. Thank you so much. Happy hunting. I will see you in the next video. One thing I forgot, um, if you don't know already, I am doing a tour of Egypt uh, in, later next year. Um, September 2022. Um, you're very welcome to join me. I will put a link in the description box down below. I'm not sure how many uh, tickets are left, so maybe, maybe hurry. Um, I am co-hosting a tour with uh, Annie XT. He is a co-YouTuber, um, does an amazing channel, um, and he really gets into the kind of spiritual side as well as the ancient tech stuff. So I'm interested in both, in both in both of those things. So wonderful. I will see you next week. Uh, have a good week. I'm going to get back to researching.